Hello, and welcome to this video on equivalence. We're going to look at what is this idea of equivalence, and more importantly, what does it really mean? What interesting um, result does it actually give us? So, equivalence comes about once Newton writes down both a law describing how an object accelerates in response to a force, and the theory of gravity, because they are talking about fundamentally different things. The one over here on the left is the theory of gravity, and that thing is telling us something about how a mass gives rise to gravity, as well as maybe how it responds, while the one on the right is talking more generally about what's going on if I apply some force, a spring force, a gravitational force, an applied force, a normal force, to some object, what acceleration do I get? So these are talking about two different things, this little m here, which we can call the inertial mass, and it's just, right from that one, we can say mass inertial is just the force divided by acceleration. I'm just rearranging the equation on the right. Whereas on the left, we have little m, which is gravitational, and that thing, according to this, is the gravitational force times r squared divided by g and the mass of some other object that's exerting gravity on you. So looking at this, there's sort of two masses, because originally the two equations are talking about two different things. So we've got two different masses, and this idea of equivalence is this strange suggestion that indeed this inertial mass is equal to the gravitational mass. So why are those masses the same? That's not any way built into this system. It's something that is completely um, not intuitive or not uh, actually necessary. So it's a strange quirk that they are the same. It's a little mystery of nature. So, as I say, the one on the left talks about how I respond or give rise to gravity, while the one on the right is this inertial mass talking about responses to force in terms of the acceleration that um, that force results in. Okay, this strange quirk of nature is equivalence. It's the equivalence of the inertial mass and the gravitational mass. So what does it mean to say that the gravitational mass and the inertial mass are the same? What it really means is that basically, if I look at this one, I have an idea of what my mass is based on the force of gravity that I feel being around some other mass, m. On the other hand, I have some idea of what my mass is if I just experience basically an acceleration for some arbitrary force, a thrust force, a normal force, whatever. So what it means is, that just being around another mass, exerting some gravitational force on you, is exactly the same, actually, as accelerating with a constant acceleration. So acceleration can be used as artificial gravity. What does that mean? Well, it means, let's say, that we are off out in space, not around a planet. There's no gravity. But I can use this equivalence of the masses to make things feel normal. If I just accelerate in my little spaceship at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, then I actually feel like I'm under the influence of Earth's gravity. So if I'm in a box that has no windows, I cannot tell whether I'm in the spaceship accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared, or if I'm back at home, locked away on Earth. Then, there's actually some even more clever tricks, which is, I could just be going around in a circle. What does that mean? Well, remember that if you're doing a uniform circular motion, then you're thinking about a certain centripetal acceleration must act to keep you moving in that circle, because at any one point, you're trying to move tangent to the circle. And that centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared on r because the centripetal force is equal to mv squared on r. So that centripetal acceleration, just by tweaking basically the radius and how fast you are moving in that circle tangentially to that circle, you can set up artificial gravity again. 
So you match your V and your R in such a way that you get a value of 9.8. So if you sit on the inside of this rotating object of radius R, then you feel at that distance against your feet uh, something that feels like gravity, just because of this centripetal acceleration matching the 9.8 meters per second squared. So you can generate artificial gravity in this way. So that's one really neat um, consequence and application, and hopefully that motivates you to care somewhat about this neat idea of equivalence. So gravitational mass describes how basically mass generates gravity, and the inertial mass, which describes how it will accelerate as a result of experiencing some force, are actually the same, which means that to some degree, gravity and acceleration are interchangeable or are the same thing. And that, of course, means that we can do this cool thing of creating artificial gravity either by ex accelerating constantly or, in a more feasible way, by rotating at just the right rate so that the centripetal acceleration matches the gravitational acceleration you're trying to mimic. Okay, so some food for thought. We've talked about the ability to sort of create artificial gravity just by spinning. How might I go about lessening the force of gravity? And sort of to guide this, is the normal force that a scale exerts upon you when you stand on it, is it always really in magnitude g m m on r squared? Or is it something else? 